Hey everyone, so we're going to actually calculate our F test in this video. So we're going to take our original data frame. Let's take a look at the data that we already have. We have all these other columns here. I want to simplify this. So we're going to create a new data frame. We're just going to df2 and take our original data frame. And we'll say dot lock. And we want to actually just look at the r minus rf column and up to the predicted column. So that would be df2. So this will be our new data frame we're going to work with. Now remember, we wanted to take our sum of squared errors. So if we look at that, we have our observed value minus our predicted value. So we already have a predicted value here. And remember, that was, that was calculated from our regression equation, where we just took our independent variable times the coefficient, so coefficient plus intercept. That's how we got that value. But now we need just to take our R minus RF, that's our excess returns of Apple, minus our predicted value. So we're going to create a new column here, DF2, and we're just going to call this errors for now. And we're just going to say that is just equal to DF2, and that will be, we're going to take our R minus RF column, and we're going to subtract that from our predicted column. So that should work. That should be df2. So we have our new column of errors here. And now we just need to square that column. So we're just going to call this new column squared errors. And that is just equal to, that should be df2, df2. And that's just equal to our errors squared, like so. There we go. So we have our squared errors. And now we just need to sum this. So we'll have our sum squared errors is just equal to this df2 column squared errors. That should be 1s squared errors dot sum. There we go. So we have our sum of squared errors. Now we need to calculate our regression sum of squares. So we just need to take, and if we look at the equation, we're just taking our predicted value, predicted value here minus our the average of the dependent variable. And that's why. So that's r minus r of s. So we just need to calculate this mean. So that's pretty fairly easy. We're just going to take r minus rf dot mean. There we go. Not that, and we'll just say that is just equal to the word mean, like that. And now we can just take our column, where we take our predicted column, and we're going to subtract that from the mean. There we go. And, and what I can do here is I can just create a new column, and I'm just going to call this squared. I'll just call it squared. And we'll take our predicted column minus our mean. And we can put this all in a parentheses, and we can actually square it like this. And we'll output df2. There we go. So we have squared here. So we did this all in one line. And now we can just take the sum of our squared regression sum of squares. So we can just take our regression sum of squares. And so to do that, we're just going to say RSS, regression sum of squares is just equal to df2, and we'll take squared, and we'll just say sum, version sum squares. There we go, 0 0.0844. So now all we have to do is just, we need to, if we look at our F test, we just have to take our regression sum of squares divided by k. Remember, that's a slope number slope coefficient, so when we have 1, so this is going to be just this. And then for sum of squared errors, divided by the degrees of freedom. And so we're just going to take regression sum of squares divided by 1. It should be mean sum regression sum of squares. MSR, that's like, like so. And then remember, mean sum squared errors. That is just equal to sum squared errors divided by the degrees of freedom, which we were actually already calculated. And I believe it was 69. Let's just verify, verify that. 69, so we can just do this. 
There's our means, sum of squared errors. And so the calculator F statistic, remember F test is just the difference between the ratio of the variance. So we have take our MSR over the variance of MSC. And run that. We get 21.330. Is that what we got from our results? 21.31. So there we go. We calculate our F statistic. Remember, this measures how well the regression equation explains the variation in the dependent variable. So if the regression model does a good job of explaining variation in the dependent variable, this ratio should be very high. We can also notice that the probability of F statistic, this is the p-value, is very small. So we can reject the null that the coefficient on beta is zero. So again, how can we interpret this? Well, if the regression model does a good job of explaining the variation in the dependent variable, this ratio, the F test, should be very high. So the larger, the better. And remember, we're testing that if all the coefficients in the equation, regression equation, are equal to or not equal to zero. And so we usually use the F test when we're doing multivariate regression. But we already can tell that if we look at this p-value here of the F statistic, it's less than 0.05. So it's telling us nothing more than what we already know from our T test here at 4.61. So we can tell that this regress, this coefficient on our equation is on the independent variable is different from zero. 